This chapter is like really good. Although I haven't actually made a One Punch Man review since chapter 170, that's gonna change now. So if you're new to the channel and want to see some more One Punch Man content, then consider sticking around as I also do Jujutsu Kaisen and Hunter x Hunter videos. Once I'm finished with school, of course, I plan on trying to do YouTube full time and cover a lot of the series that I read on Shonen Jump, including the ones I've already mentioned, plus Chainsaw Man, My Hero Academia, Black Clover, all that jazz. Enough with the long intro though, let's get on into this juicy chapter. So it starts off with the Hero Association workers getting pissed off at Metal Knight for his defense robots malfunctioning and exploding since each robot cost $9 million to develop straight from the Hero Association fund. And we obviously know that the robots didn't explode from its own technology error. It was actually Saitama who destroyed them in the last chapter, but Saitama didn't want to reveal that information because he didn't want to pay the enormous destruction fee. Back to the chapter though, we then get a look at the man behind Metal Knight for the very first time, Dr. Bafoy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is like the very first time in the manga that we ever see Dr. Bafoy's face very clearly here, and he's shocked to figure out that his newly completed defense system has been destroyed. Apparently, those level 10 robots were strong enough to beat a demon class monster, so, you know, stronger than the Deep Sea King. I mean, we already knew that they were stronger than all the A-class heroes combined, but yeah, he's baffled that some unheard newbie was the one who destroyed all those robots. Obviously, he can see through the robots' footage that it was Saitama who did this, so he gets curious and starts looking into Saitama's data and track record. For the most part, his activities seemed pretty normal, but the information that catches Dr. Bafoy's eyes is the fact that Saitama broke all records in the physical exam. He comes to the conclusion that Saitama is at least S rank and wants to keep a close eye on him. So there's another character who's catching on to the true powers of Caped Baldi. It then shifts to the S class heroes meeting and this part of the chapter is juicy. Stitch calls this emergency meeting due to the numerous reports of mysterious phenomena occurring during the Monster Association War. It's possible that these phenomena are connected to the end of the world prophecy. One of the reports was human monsterization, or more specifically, humans turning into monsters. Typical of my mask is like, wait, what's going on? I got a tight schedule after this meeting, so could you explain to me about this whole humans turning into monsters report? And then typical Genos is like, let's talk about Saitama for three hours and pulls up a bunch of prep notes of Saitama's activity. Although, Stitch says that Genos can wait after, as he turns to Zombie Man's report, writing about Homeless Emperor's monsterization. Zombie Man says, yeah, about that report. Homeless Emperor was given divine power by something he called God, and by revealing that information, his body just disintegrated right after. So this stuck with Zombie Man ever since the incident, and when he tells this to the people in the room, they're all kind of shocked, like, what the hell? God God giving powers to people? Is God just the nickname of somebody? Is it the nickname of a particular monster from the association? Or is it actually a godlike entity? Flashy Flash then asks Zombie Man if he heard anything said telepathically after Homeless Emperor died, because he explains that this supposed god was also telepathically communicating to Flashy Flash, Saitama, and Monica when they interacted with one of God's mysterious cues. This led God to reach out to the three of them about gaining divine power, the same that happened to Homeless Emperor, but if the vessel for that power was not worthy, then they would get confiscated. This confirms that Flashy Flash and Zombie Man are both talking about the same god. Since Flashy Flash met Blast after interacting with one of the mysterious cubes, Blast told him to send his regard to Stitch, meaning that Stitch likely knows what's going on with this god and mysterious cubes and why Blast is exactly after them. Eventually, Eventually, Stitch comes forward and discloses the truth, a secret he's been hiding all this time, revealing that Blast, for 20 years, has been continuously fighting against this godlike entity that they all have encountered in the Monsters Association War. It goes on to say that Blast's partner and many other collaborators were searching for a mysterious cube that could turn humans into monsters. These cubes has been handed down over time as a kind of communication device with this god. You can think of it as an out-of-place artifact. Blast had been collecting these cubes and, with his collaborators, they attempted to analyze them. However, 
two years ago, when Blast was fighting Elder Centipede, he came into contact with God. Okay, so let's hold the brakes here. For a quick reminder, in Chapter 84, when Bang, Bomb, and Genos were all fighting Elder Centipede, Bearded Worker mentioned that Blast had fought Elder Centipede a few years back and gravely injured him but managed to escape underground. Now, because of this, some people back then presumed that Blast wasn't as strong as we thought, because Saitama was able to defeat Elder Centipede in one punch, whereas Blast just let him escape, thus he's kind of weak. Though I never really liked that reasoning, since Saitama is obviously leagues above everyone else, and you know, just in general, Bang, Bomb, and Genos combined couldn't do much damage to Elder Centipede, so you know, the statement of Blast gravely injuring Elder Centipede is quite a big feat. But it still begs the question, why did Blast let Elder Centipede escape? Well, now we know, after many years later, as God seemed to interfere with their fight, which allowed Elder Centipede to escape from Blast. Now, since Blast had encountered God, he refused its proposal of divine power and made himself an enemy against God. If we take a look at Blast looking upon the sky, we see that he doesn't have the huge scar across his face, but then in the panel right after, he's all beat up and scarred, which, you know, confirms that God gave him that scar. I mean, I wasn't a part of the One Punch Man community back then, I'd only watched the anime, so I don't know if this was like an obvious thing that everyone knew that only God could have given that scar to Blast, because before this chapter came out, it looked like it could have been another character from the webcomic as well. Now, spoiler warning for the webcomic, because this actually ties into the previous panel with Blast's partner, as his partner seems to be a ninja or a swordsman, which, you know, could very well be a new character that we just haven't met yet in this story. But you could also think that this could be the leader of the ninja village, a character who gets brought up in the webcomic and is said to be the strongest ninja in history, known as the Ninja Village Leader, because he was simply the founder of the Ninja Village, the same village that Sonic and Flashy Flash come from. Now, why could this particular ninja be the one that's beside Blast? Well, because Ninja Village Leader did fight Blast sometime in the past, I believe it was 15 years ago, so it does or can align to the 20 plus years that Blast has been going for these mysterious cubes. Although, it was never mentioned in the webcomic that they were partners before or something like that. So yeah, it's likely that this is just a new character, unless one is actually changing the direction of his character from the webcomic. Whatever the case may be, it turned out that Blast was just able to make it out alive from his fight with God. And then we understand why Blast disappeared from the Hero Association. The reason why he left ambiguously was to protect everyone so that they wouldn't be aware of this godlike existence. It was for theirs and the entire world's safety. If Stitch even tried to tell the higher-ups the truth about Blast and God, they would have just thought he was excusing himself for not wanting to take the responsibility of letting Elder Centipede escape. But after all this praise about Blast, Genos comes out and says that it's too bad. Because if they had disclosed this information sooner, Saitama, aka A-Class Hero Caped Baldi, would have resolved this problem already. Stitch immediately disagrees, because no matter how strong Genos claims Saitama to be, it's not the strength that allowed Blast to battle with God, but it's because he has the ability to manipulate time and space. And then Genos ends up showing everyone in the room the core of his past self and reveals the truth of what Saitama actually did during the whole Monster Association War. He explained how he time traveled, changed the events of history, saved Genos and defeated Garo before his cosmic fear powers could get to a worse extent. And you know, maybe it would have been believable to the people in the room if typical Genos didn't take four hours to explain this. I mean, 90% of his explanation was just about Saitama alone, and my mask had left him midway during the explanation because it was too long and he had stuff to do, of course. They all think the authenticity of one flying to Jupiter, going back in time, and changing the events of history sounds too out of reach. And so when Stitch suggests confirming this with Saitama, Genos replies that Saitama actually doesn't remember much of the fight himself, so that makes it sound more unbelievable. Then Zombie Man suggests asking Garo since, you know, he's now being accompanied by Bang, but Garo already stated to the police that he doesn't remember much of the fight either. The topic digresses and goes back to the God stuff, saying that the interaction with God's dimension has been rapidly increasing, which means that something in our dimension is summoning him here. We don't know what that thing is, but Blast will soon return to us to plan
plan out some countermeasures. Okay, so let's pause for a minute. The fact that it showed Saitama when mentioning that something in our dimension is causing these increased interactions with God to exist, whether it's done like this for a reason, Saitama is up for some heavy theorizing. That being said, I also do think Saitama is unironically the reason, but we just don't know why yet. Back to the chapter, the meeting is now over, and Genos leaves the room by saying the only countermeasures we need is Master Saitama, aka Hero Cape Baldi. And the chapter ends with essentially all three of them, Flashy Flash, Zombie Man, and even Amai Mask, recognizing Saitama and somewhat believes that he is the ideal hero, the diamond in the rough to this upcoming catastrophe. This is awesome because the story is slowly building rep for Saitama. From this chapter alone, it's now three heroes, two monster association associates, and Dr. Before. This chapter was overall great, a huge load of information, lore dumps, but I gotta say, one of my favorite parts was actually when Flashy Flash covered for Monaco, meaning that Monaco is definitely still alive and is chilling with Flashy Flash. We love to hear that, but definitely let me know your thoughts on this crazy chapter in the comment section down below. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.